Welcome back to part two of the series. So in this um, video, we're going to be creating the files that we need for our extension and going through the actual basic styling that we need for our notes um, extension. And before in the next video, we'll start connecting everything up to the, the database so that we can then make sure that we can create notes and edit them and everything like that. So to begin with, we're going to be creating the files that we need. So we're gonna go into Atom now and add a new project. Um, but if you already um, have your project set up, you, you're ready right away. So for, for me, I've just made a new file, a new folder just here. So I'm going to add a number of files in here. So the first one will be my manifest file. So that's just manifest.json. And then we need another file. This will be app.js and then firebase.js and then we will need background.html and then finally we need the actual new tab page so we'll call this new tab.html okay so these are all the files that we actually need so the first one we're going the first one we're going to change is our manifest file so let's open that up and close all of the other ones just close all of these and the manifest file is what we need. So everything in the Chrome extension is inside a object in JavaScript. So we just open up our curly brackets like this. And we can just add in our different parameters. So the first one is name. So this is just the name of your extension. So I'm just gonna call mine new tab notes and then you put a comma and then version this is the first version, so I'll just put 0.01, but again, you can put whatever you need. Then description, notes when you open a new tab, anything that you need. Um, and next, we need to put background. So the way that we make connections to Firebase is through our background page. Now, this is how you can actually um, process extra external JavaScript files. So I'll explain that when we get to that point, but for now, you just need to add a background object just here. And then inside here, we're gonna say page. This is the location of our background page. And that is the um, background.html over here. So you just put it in like that. And then we just need to say persistent is false. So it's not constantly running. It's only gonna run when we call it. So next we need to say Chrome URL overrides. This is where we can overwrite the new tab HTML. So you can, there's a number of different types of um, overrides you can make, but for this example, we're going to be using the new tab. So we just put overrides, just make sure I spell it right. Overrides, there we go. So again, add a new object like we did before. And in here we just say new tab. So this is the name of the Chrome, the Chrome page you want to replace. So in this example, it's just new tab. And then we just, as we did up here with the background.html, we pass in the location of our page. So there we have it, new tab. And then down here, we're just gonna say manifest version. I'm using version two, so it's probably the same um, for you as well. And then the last thing we need to put is the um, is extra security options because we're making external calls to Firebase. So this is just called content security policy. And then it's quite a long string just here. So you can, I'll put it in the description so you can copy this. Okay, so now that we've added our content security policy, it should look like this. So we're just gonna click save or command S. And that is our manifest file created. So what we can do now is go ahead and actually add this into Chrome. Now it won't do anything at the moment because our new tab page is empty, but it should um, display a message if this is the actual data we wanna show in this. So to begin with, we need to go over to Chrome and then depending on which version of Chrome you're using, you just click this extension icon just here, and then you wanna click on manage extensions. And then up here you can see I've searched for my extension as I haven't loaded it in yet. Make sure you click on developer mode, and then all you need to do is click load unpacked extension and then find the folder that you created where we added those files um, a moment ago. So I'm just gonna click this now and find my folder. Okay, so I've selected my page, you can see that it's got all of the details we created. There's the title, there's the version number, there's the description. And if you click on details, um, you can find out more information as well, such as the um, background page, 
and the information that we've asked for. So we didn't add any extra permissions. So this is everything that we need um, so far. So that is our um, extension files created and added into um, Chrome. So if we open a new tab now, you can see it's saying, is this the new tab that you're expecting? Because we've just changed what this is. So the first time that you open this up, it will have, it will have this message. So all you need to do is say, keep changes. And now you can see we have this blank page open, which is great, this is what we need. So this means everything's now connected. Okay, so now we're gonna go over to our new tab page and quickly put in the basic HTML that we want um, to display the contents of our new tab. So to begin with, we're gonna create a create a new HTML page. So we're just gonna use um, the standard HTML5 doc type. Start the page as you normally would. So HTML, open and close. We want a header, open and close. Body, open and close. Just space that down a little bit. We'll put in a title. You can change any of these parts if you want. And then we're gonna add a block up here for some styling, but we're not gonna put this in just yet. We can move this into an external um, CSS file as well if you want, but to begin with, we'll just put it in here. And um, we need to set the meta type. So because we're gonna be using emojis, we need to make sure that we have the correct um, meta data set up at the top here, just like this. And that is everything that we need so far for the head part of our page. And then in the body, we wanna set the display for our page. So we just need to put a div here at the top with a class of main or anything that you want there. Um, this is gonna be the main sort of area of our page. And then inside this, we're going to have a sidebar. I'll just use a side for this. I'll give it a class of sidebar. This will be the left-hand side. So make sure you spell it correctly like that. And then we wanna have a icon appear at the top of the page. So we just call this class icon and then put in an emoji of your choice. So I'm just gonna find um, a random emoji here and this will essentially be the logo of our extension. So I use this pen icon just here. And then just close off that div. And then we can just put in a title for our page. So we just call it new tab notes. So we've got new tab notes. And then we wanna add in a button for people to be able to, for people to be able to create new notes. So we'll just put again a new div, class new note. And then for, to begin with, we'll just put in the words new note and maybe just an emoji over here, like a plus icon or something like that. There we go, like this one. There we go, so we'll just put a space between those two items. And then underneath this, we're just gonna put a, a new uh, div again called pages holder. And this will be where all of our different uh, pages of notes will be added in later on. So we've just got this area just here. So that's everything that we want to display in our sidebar for now. Now we need to add our main area. So we're gonna create a new section with a class of holder. And then inside here is where we're gonna have the actual content of our notes. So as you can see um, from this example, we need to have our top part here where we have our emoji then our title, and then the body of our note. So that's what we're gonna be creating next. So we'll go over to our Atom again, inside our section. So we've got div class icon. So this will be the icon emoji for this particular note that we have opened up. And then we're gonna put a space here for our action buttons. So this will be to um, save or delete a note. So we'll just make a note here to put these in soon. So again, we'll add them in later on. So now we just need to make sure that we have a title for our page. So this will be our note title. And then all we need next is the area for the body of our note. So we call this post body. So this will be the content of the note. So let's save this now and have a look at our extension. So we go to a new tab, we can see we have this information displayed now, which is slowly getting there, but we need to add a little bit of styling um, to make this look the way we want. So I'll add a link in the description to, a, um, uh, to GitHub with all of the CSS if you don't wanna follow through with this part, but otherwise I'll quickly run through the CSS um, that I want to add here. So we'll start with styling the overall page, so we'll put HTML and body, we wanna set a height, 
of 100% just so that our sidebar spans the entire width of the page. We want to make sure it's 100% of the width as well. Remove all margins, remove all padding, and then set a font size of 100%. So that's our um, top part of our page. Then we want to style our headers. So we'll choose a font family here, something that's nice and um, nice to read. So you can see we have this nice readable font here for the headers. So this font is actually called um, Playfair Display. So this is from uh, Google Fonts, so we need to add this at the top, but I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And then we're just gonna add a couple of fullbacks for other nice readable fonts. And all we need to do next is set a nice font weight. So something around 900. So that's our header. Then for our body, we wanna set a background color. So I found these colors on Tailwind. Um, I'll put a link in the description to where you can find more information about Tailwind, but for now the color, I've just got it copied over here. And then for the text color, so that is the um, background color of our page. So if we go over to our new tab again and refresh, we can see we have this display here. We're gonna add a light mode and a dark mode so that we can have that support straight away. So that's our background. And then for our dark mode, it will be body, dark. So the color is what we used as our background color and our font color becomes our background color, just like that. So if we were to put in class dark and refresh, you can see we have dark mode support already. But what we can do at some point is add a button or look at the um, time of the user and then automatically switch which mode that we're using. But for now, let's just leave it empty and carry on adding our styling. So our div main, so the whole um, container is gonna be using a display type of flex and also make sure that it's 100% um, for height as well. So if we have a look over here now, we can see that the, they are appearing side by side, which is what we want. And then for our sidebar, we need to make sure we set a maximum width of 300. Set a background color for here as well. So I've got EDF, again, I found this on Tailwind, to F7, a height of 100%, padding of 25 pixels. And then we wanna set a dark mode for our sidebar as well. And again, if you wanna change any of the colors and styling, um, feel free to do so. So this is 718096 from Tailwind. So if we have a look at this now, we can see we have this slight difference just here. And then for the dark mode, it looks like this. So it's a smooth um, change just in the background color there. But again, let's go back and carry on adding our styling. So for the main area of our page, we wanna make sure that we fill the entire width available. So because this is a Chrome extension, we can use CSS that normally wouldn't be supported across the entire web, but because we know it's just on Chrome, we can use Chrome specific um, CSS attributes. So to begin with here, we're gonna be using WebKit fill available. So that makes sure that our um, main area here goes across the entire width of the page. And then we want to do the same with the height as well, make sure it's filling up the entire page and add 25 pixel padding as well, just to space it out a little bit. So there we have this part so far. Next is our div icon. So we'll put a height of 30 pixels, a width of 30 pixels, a line height of 30 pixels, and a font size of 28 pixels. So that just adjusts our logo just here. And then we want to make sure that if they hover over the icon that we have over here, that it makes sure that it is clickable. So to do that, you just say cursor is pointer. So that's all we need to do to make sure we can test that is just add an emoji over here. So I'm gonna use this paper emoji and then save. And if we refresh, you can see there that there's a, a pointer um, style above that one, but this one's just normal. This is all the CSS we need so far. So at the moment, you can see that these elements aren't um, too easy to interact with. But in the next video, we're going to be making it so that we can change the text that we're entering just here using an uh, attribute called content editable. And then we're gonna make sure that the, when these are focused that the CSS, the default CSS isn't um, being used. We, so we can change that border that's added around the element. But just before the end of this video, we need to make sure that the JavaScript file that we're using is added onto our page as well. So at the bottom of our um, new tab to HTML, just before the end of the body tag just here, we're going to say script source app.js like this. 
and then in app.js we're just going to put in alert test just to see that everything's connected properly so if we refresh now we should see this alert that's great so what we need to do next is add in our emoji picker so to do this you need to go to emoji-button.js.org so this address just here and this will load up the um, library that we're going to use and then all we need to do is scroll down here to where we have this um, cdn url and because we're using a Chrome extension, we need to make sure that all of the resources that we're going to be using are contained within the actual um, JavaScript files. So you just need to select all of this or use Command A, then copy, and then add this to our JavaScript file. So this will be right at the bottom of the page. So that's pasted in down here now. And then underneath this, we need to add a event listener to see when the actual page has loaded. So you do this by saying window add event listener dom content loaded and then you want to put a comma just here because we're calling a function straight away and then open that just here. So this function will run once the window, once the Chrome extension has completely loaded. So inside here we're going to set two variables. One is button and this will be equal to uh, um, icon so that'll be query selector that'll be holder icon just make sure there's a, a dot in front of both of those so we're using the class names and then the other one will be the picker and that's going to be new emoji button so that uses this um, library that we just installed and then we just need to add a listener for each of these events so when the button is clicked and when the picker is used so once they've actually clicked on one of the emojis so we'll set the button first, we'll say button add event listener for click, then call this function. And then here we can make actions when this event is um, called. So we're just gonna say picker, toggle picker, button. So essentially open the picker. This is the element that they clicked. And then after this, we need to say picker on emoji. So when an emoji has been selected, we're going to take which emoji that was. So this will be the emoji they've selected. And then we'll have a callback here as well. And we just want to say button in a text. So change the actual emoji that is shown on the button to be a new emoji. So if we save this now, just check that we've removed the alert at the top of the page. Yep, I've removed the alert. So up here we'll have the rest of our file. Now just go to our extension and refresh and if we try and click on this icon now you can see it opens this emoji selector and if we click on them it replaces the chosen emoji with what we've selected. So that's how we add the emoji picker. In the next video we're going to start to add more interactivity so making sure that when we click on these areas we can edit the text that we are seeing here make sure we've got the buttons and start interacting with our database so we can actually make sure that our notes are saved and that we're actually fetching notes from the database. So join me in the next video where we'll be adding in more database um, functions and feel free to subscribe if you wanna find out when this video is uploaded. But otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.